Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be working on the Novo 19.3 again, and we are actually going to be converting over from a single propane tank, it's actually a single 20 pound propane tank, to dual 20 pound propane tanks. Um, and uh, it should be pretty straightforward, so I'm going to walk you through the regulator setup, walk you through hooking up the hoses and things like that. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm actually doing a dual battery conversion as well. So I just go ahead and ignore that the box is on here and that these are finger tight, but I am gonna go ahead and remove my battery. Uh, just to get it out of the way, just to remove these cables. Um, also, I'm gonna be working with propane. Uh, just eliminate the chance of any sparks or things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and separate these. If you have a battery disconnect, turn that off so I've got my battery disconnect off this battery just pulls right out because I've already removed the box now let's go ahead and take the propane cover off so on this one here there's a little wing nut we have to undo then once you do that you can pull this cover off now normally a propane tank would be sitting right here but I've already taken mine off to take some measurements and so there'd just be another wing nut here that you'd loosen up that would tighten down around that cylinder so this is all one piece. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove these screws that are holding this, this bracket on here. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna undo these hoses connected to this regulator. So the way that I do it, I go ahead and I just put the two wrenches somewhat close together to where I can squeeze these together and rotate that. And then it should just spin off with your fingers. Okay, this is a flared fitting. So whenever you're doing flared fittings, um, there's never any type of thread tape or any type of pipe dope or any sealer or anything that's ever gonna go on those threads. You're gonna be relying on the actual flare of this fitting to mate up with the flare in here and that's gonna make your seal. So, so remember that as we move on into the installation. Now that this is loose and this is free, we can go ahead and we can remove the bracket. So this bracket is actually held on by four self-tapping 3 8 inch head screws. So you could uh, technically use a ratchet if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna use this little uh, 3 8 inch uh, socket bit, and then I'm just gonna pull these off that way. I'm gonna save these, because I'm gonna use these whenever I put my new bracket on for the dual tanks. And now that we got that off, we're just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna spray some, uh, just some whatever spray paint you have. This is just black injured enamel, um, just to prevent that from rusting in the future. It is gonna be covered with our new bracket, so I'm not worried about how pretty it is. I just don't want that to be an area of failure in the future. Right, so for our setup, what I've done is I went ahead and I picked up, this is the, uh, the Camco, I'll, I'll put all the, this stuff in the descriptions, but this is the Camco, it's just a dual LP gas, a propane tank cover and um, what this one does is it actually doubles I can I can either do 220 uh, pound tanks or 230 uh, pound tanks and so I went ahead and opted for the 30 pound option because in the future I might put 30 pound tanks on this so um, it's just a little bit of a height difference uh, so I decided to go with it the regulator I got is actually an auto switch over and so this is really nice because I can designate which tank I want it to pull from first and then it's got this little uh, viewing window here that tells me when one's empty or uh, it tells me if it's full. And so it either switches from green, which is good, uh, to red, which means you're out. And then it's also an auto switch over. So um, depending on which tank I have it pointing at, when it turns to red, uh, that tank's empty, but it will automatically switch over and draw from the other tank. So no more getting up in the middle of the night to uh, switch out a propane tank. And then these are just stainless steel braided lines. We live in a pretty hot climate here. Uh, so I went with these. Uh, they had really good reviews on Amazon. Again, flared fittings here. So where they go into here, there won't be any uh, thread tape on those threads. And then the base plate here is this one, very thick, very sturdy. Um, we're gonna use a couple of those bolts that they used to uh, mount that other one. And we're gonna put those down and then Again, the only thing that really changes with this being a 30 pound setup is this uh, is a little bit longer. So this just mounts into here, right? You'll screw that in all the way. This comes into here, this screws on here, and that's what holds your tanks 
in the place. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get this installed. All right, so now we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna make these two halves together. And uh, you can see it's pretty simple. They really glue everything in here. But we'll rip that out. So it's got the lid, it's got all the hardware here. I actually like this going together a lot better than the old riveted kind, like that one's riveted. And they always seem to pop out or come apart. So let's go ahead, let's put these together. So the hardware that they give us, we're actually gonna have this kind here, which is gonna be used to hold the lid in place. And then we have this here, which is gonna be used for um, actually holding the two halves together. So it's just your basic Phillips screw with a little nylock nut. And so those will tie together and hold everything in place. So I'm just gonna take that, put those two together. All right, and we'll just do that all the way around, tighten those up. But the extension actually comes in really handy right here. All right, not too tight. We don't want that to pull through. And let's do that all the way around. All right, now that we got all those tight, you can see this just has these little clips here and they line up with the notches. So then you just snap those into place. That should lay down like that. And you can mount this either direction. So I want my Phillips heads facing out and I want this folding back. So in case this gets loose, it shouldn't go flying off. Although it still might happen, but. All right, and then according to the directions, this has like a little protrusion that comes out this way a little bit. And then it's got the offset to the back. So that's the way this goes. And then these just go into those little rectangular slots and they kind of lock in. All right, and then these tighten down here. No need to tighten them all the way because you have to wait and see how tight you need them here. And that's how those go on. All right, so let's go ahead and let's look at that base plate. Now that we have our measurements and our widths and things, we can figure out exactly where we need it. So this is what we really care about, and we're about four inches dead on uh, from the front of the plate to the back of our tubing here. Now, from the center out, we're six and a half inches. So uh, you might have a different jack setup than I do. You might have a different trailer tongue dimension, but if you're on the 19.3, this is about where you wanna be for your propane tank setup. So let's go ahead, we're gonna take these off and then we're gonna bolt this thing in. All right, so once we're sure that we're even, I'm gonna go ahead, you can see I only have one notch that I can really utilize. And so I'm gonna use that one first. So you don't have to pre-drill the hole first because those are self-tapping screws, uh, but I am gonna go ahead and drill this next part because we're missing a slot right there. So I'm gonna drill through this plate and the frame underneath it. If you've already got this in there, whenever you're doing this, make sure that you're exercising safety. The last thing you wanna do is slip and you know, you could really do some damage with this. So be careful if this is already in there. So really no measurements here other than I can see where my ring was, where my um, base of my propane tank mounted. So I'm gonna come in just a little bit there and try to stick in the center of the frame. Now that we have all those bolted in, we can go ahead and put our tanks on. All right, and so this here just comes in here. All right, so we just line up those notches like that. Regulator then just goes right on top of there. We can tighten that on down. So we, before we attach that permanently, I do need to steal this fitting here. And then using some Teflon tape that is actually meant for LP applications, Put that there and then this will install into our new regulator all right and then the regulator goes on top of here we want to route our line there's a little hole in the bottom of this this plate so we're going to route this here And 
this will tighten on. Alright, again, make sure you use the backup. Put that in there right there. And then you want to check to see how low all of your new lines are. Alright, then we're going to take our new stainless steel oops, inlet lines. So my camera overheated, but all this you missed was I just tightened these up again using two crescents. Alright, so I just put these lines on using two crescents, right? One is a backup one uh, to tighten it down. Okay, and then now we're ready just to tighten these up. Point your arrow in the direction that you want. And then if you're like me and your line changed, you need to make sure that you figure out a way to move that up into a different position so that you don't have all that extra propane line just dangling down at the bottom. All right, so the way that I'm dealing with that just temporarily is gonna be uh, some zip ties until I can get the right uh, clamp and I'm gonna bolt that to a different spot on the frame. Okay, now that we're there, we got all this done. Turn your propane on and it's time to check for leaks. All right, so to check for leaks, the way that I do it is just with some soapy water. Just wanna spray all these connections that we did. You just look for any bubbling. And I actually actually recommend everybody to do this probably at least every six months. Just make sure you don't have any bubbles forming. And if it passes the leak test, then you're good to go. Which I think we're good. I just went ahead and checked everything. Uh, no leaks, purge the system inside using the stove. You wanna get all the air out of those lines that you might have introduced into the system so that you don't have any fault codes or errors or anything with your refrigerator or your um, water heater. And then once we do that, we're good to put our cover on. So you just wanna make sure that the lid's going in the right direction. All right, make sure everything's on there. Snap it into place. So there you have it. I mean, it took all of maybe 45 minutes to get all this done. Uh, it really wasn't that bad. Um, if you liked it, you found it useful, make sure you hit that like button. If you want to check out some of my other DIYs or maybe see some of my uh, outdoor things that I do on this channel, uh, consider subscribing. And then, uh, as always, hit that notification icon so that you stay up to date as soon as I release a new video. So, again, I just want to thank you for watching. Uh, stay tuned, and I'll catch you on the next video.